you're in luck because today we are talking how to get an optimized timeline workflow like Final Cut in DaVinci Resolve. Yo guys, what is going on? Jake Filzine here back with just a quick little video today. Hopefully I'm gonna try to make it as to the point as possible, but today we are talking about how to make your timeline playback as smooth as possible if you're working in DaVinci Resolve, specifically if you're on a Mac and if you're coming from a Final Cut background. The only reason I know all of this is because that describes me to a T. I have a 2018 MacBook Pro, love that computer. I've, you know, one of the best purchases I've ever made for like my creative sort of workflow. And I really started all of my editing in Final Cut. Final Cut's where I kind of fell in love with post-production. Editing in general is just awesome in Final Cut. It's a great tool for beginners and professionals alike. Apple just really knocked it out of the park with Final Cut in general. But you guys maybe know, or if you don't know, the more you kind of get into Final Cut, it does, it misses on a lot of really cool features that Resolve has. And really this video is spawned from, recently I made a backpacking film, which I loved, go check it out. And I kind of had a couple of takeaways from that. One of them is that I wanted to shoot long op footage in log and I just wanted to potentially, you know, if I was to make another one of the, when I make another one of those videos, I wanted to do it in DaVinci. So I did edit that video in Final Cut. Again, I think it turned out great, no complaints, but I would like to do the next one in Resolve. And so that following week, I did a lot of log tests with, you know, 10-bit long op footage. I'm trying not to repeat myself too much from my last video, but I want to shoot long op for those smaller file sizes, but then have 10-bit for log so that I have good dynamic range for a hiking film. And really what I ran into in those weeks of tests using DaVinci and long op and log is that it just kind of slowed down on my computer, which is no surprise. Long op is super hard on really any computer. Even a good beefy computer struggles with 4K long op footage. It's just, it's dense. Very compressed, it has a lot of information. So today we're gonna walk through how to get that background rendering type performance that maybe you're used to with Final Cut so that Resolve just runs smoother for you. And this is great if you're doing, you know, more composite type work. So if you're doing a lot of effects, a lot of, you know, layers, text, whatever the case may be, this will definitely help you. And if you're just looking for it to feel a lot more like Final Cut. So with that all out of the way, let's hop on over to the computer and let's talk through some of the settings that I tweaked to get some really good performance out of Resolve during playback on the timeline. Okay guys, so we're over here on the computer. Let's go over the things that I tweak. Now, in general, one of the first rule of thumbs that I always tell people is with this, you're really trying to mimic the background rendering that Final Cut does. So one of the first things that I really like to do if I'm working with long gop footage and it's not playing back super great, you can see here as I'm kind of scrolling the playhead, it's not super fluid, but if I right click and do Gener where is it? Generate optimized media. A little pop-up comes up and it generates in the background a rendered version of the clip that's a lot easier for the computer to handle. In general, this is somewhat of a slow process, but the nice thing about this versus Final Cut is once you do this, then you have it for the entire project. So maybe if you know you've got a lot of long op footage or footage that's gonna give you grief, drop it all in the timeline, you know, go get your go make your coffee and generate this optimized media and it's gonna save you some time. And you can tell already now as I scroll, it's pretty much virtually 100% locked on my playhead. You know, it's, it's very fluid, that makes a huge difference. Even if you're doing a lot of composite work or anything like that, this is a great step to just make your overall workflow much better. Now the next big thing that I've changed recently is in the project settings, and let's dive into that right now. The main area that you're gonna wanna look at is optimized media and render cache. Now, I've changed a couple of things. Optimize media resolution, I have choose automatically. If you're really struggling, um, you know, drop that resolution down to 1080p. I think 4K in general is gonna work okay um, because of the next two settings, which are the optimized media format and the render cache format. I have both of these set to ProRes 422HQ. That is incorrect. I would like ProRes 422 Proxy. So we're gonna change that. You can do ProRes 422 if you would like. I just like the proxy because in general, 
the overall resolution really isn't that important to me while I'm editing. And obviously when I do my final render, everything's gonna be high quality 4K. But when I'm editing, I'm okay with this, you know, ProRes proxy file. And then my computer, when it does do the optimized media or the rendering in the background, it just makes the playback really smooth. Okay, so with this, I like to, let's see, enable background caching. I turn this down to one second. That way, as soon as my playhead stops, it starts to do the background caching. And then I check all of the rest of these boxes. So I wanna have my transitions automatically be background rendered because that slows down the computer. I wanna have my composites automatically background rendered and I wanna have my fusion clips automatically background render. So really with these settings right here, the idea is, is that as I'm working, stuff begins to render in the background, never slowing me down and it just always is going to really get that peak timeline performance very similar to what you'd get in Final Cut. And I mean, I think in a lot of ways what we're doing here is what Final Cut just gives you automatically. Again, Resolve gives you way more control than Final Cut, but if you don't wanna mess around with any of this stuff, Final Cut is kind of doing what we're doing here with you know no work to you whatsoever. And here's a great example of it in action. You can see this fusion composition that I did for the intro of this video. It's, you know, when it's rendering, it has the red bar above your timeline, and then the green just means that it renders. So if I try to play this back right here, it's really choppy, it doesn't look too good, but then if we just give it a second to render, now if we watch it, it plays back completely smooth, absolutely no problem, looks great. You're also gonna see this be really effective if you're like adding layers or something or text. Um, so for example, this clip where I've got, you know, this log clip, if I come in here and do a quick color grade, so let's do that. This won't affect it. So let's do the Panasonic LUT conversion. We're not gonna do actually any grading because I kinda wanna show you guys. If you look now here, this doesn't get rendered out, which is fine because we've already optimized this clip underneath, so we don't need to worry about it. So if we look here, this isn't being rendered, which is fine, but that's okay because we've already generated the media that's optimized below, so it's not gonna, you know, our, our computer's gonna handle it fine, even with that color grade on top, that adjustment layer. But say we wanted to get a little fancier and throw, you know, like a text layer on top of this clip, now we begin to see those render bars and, you know, again, kind of potentially choppy here, not the best performance, but as soon as it's rendered into the background, you know, you're gonna get super smooth playback. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover on this. A few additional follow-up kind of tweak things to keep in mind. If you are done with your project and you want all of this optimized media to go away, maybe clear up some hard drive space, um, you just have to come up here and hit delete optimized media. And then in your render cache, you can also delete that as well. And that's just gonna clear up all of the background gunk that ends up on your hard drive. I wish Final Cut had a way to do this. Again, you just have more control in Resolve, which is really nice. This could be different for all of you guys, but me personally, I have my Resolve folder set up in my Movies folder on um, my Mac. And here you have Cache Clip, which as you can see was just updated, um, you know, by doing that background rendering. So if you really aren't sure and you have a lot of extra you know, data in this folder building up from all of your background rendering, just delete this folder. It's not gonna hurt your project and if it really needs to, it'll just regenerate the optimized media. So that's another great way if you're kind of running out of hard drive space and you're like, man, did I forget to delete my rendered media? Just go in there and nuke that folder and you're gonna be just fine. Guys, this is a totally random tip. I should have put this in like every other Resolve video, but I found recently if you use an analog like wired mouse with an actual like spinning um, wheel, like mouse wheel with some click to it, like editing in Resolve is 10 times better. I use the magic mouse, you know, Apple's magic mouse when I'm editing in Final Cut and I like it because you have no scroll wheel and this basically is like a touch screen on top and you can just scroll around the timeline. In Final Cut, this is like super fluid and great. In Resolve, it is laggy, it's not responsive, it just doesn't feel good. Um, but I use like option scroll for timeline shrinking and increasing and shift scroll. And on this mouse, complete nightmare, but now, you know, with this actual scroll wheel, I'm way faster with my mouse in Resolve. That is completely unrelated to today's video, but very helpful. So anyway, that is all I wanted to talk about on the computer, and I think, I think we can wrap this video up. 
And guys, that pretty much wraps it up there. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, just trying to give you guys some more tips to use Resolve. Again, I love Final Cut. I still use Final Cut all the time, but more and more I'm using Resolve more frequently. So I'm trying to give you guys some tips on how to use it to just its best abilities. So hope this video helped you. If it did, leave a like and a comment down below. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. We do Resolve videos. We do editing videos. We do outdoor videos. That's you know, I'm all over the place with the videos that I make, but it's in the video niche with kind of the outdoorsy type stuff. So anyway, consider subscribing. And with that, I'll just catch you guys in the next one.